In this tutorial, I'll be giving you a step-by-step -step instruction on how to create your own VBA coding within Excel to send an email via Outlook automatically. It is important that your Outlook has already been set up with your own email address and for you as an Excel user to have a basic understanding of how to create a macros, how to define variables, how to use the with operator and the for operator. So when you're ready, let's get started. Let's open our Excel workbook. It's a new page. Go to Developer tab. Open our Visual Basic Editor. Create a new macro, uh, module. And as a very good standard approach that I do, I always add an option explicit. This just always ensures you to define all your variables you create within your macros. So let's call this one sub create email. Let's me do underscore email, open and close parentheses, enter. So let us type in our first variables we need to define. It's them outlook application. This is just my short as object. Dim outlook mail as object. So this we can just call it is defining outlook variables. Then our next one is to actually allocate it. So we would say set our outlook application equal to, we need to create the object outlook dot application close parentheses enter set our outlook mail to create a new mail so we would say create item but where do we want to create it we want to create it inside our outlook application dot so let's create item zero close parentheses enter this is allocated. Now with that, the program knows that if we run this, it will actually open and create an email, but the open part is not really knowing if it should visually show us or not. So this is where we would now indicate with our with the Outlook mail. Please display it. Display end width. And to test that, let's press run. And there we go. We have just created our first macros to open a new email box. So once you're comfortable having created this part, this is the standard uh, format that you can always type to ensure that you can create a new email uh, box. Now we want to start filling in the fat. So we want to send, and this is where we work within the with box. So we would type in dot two to who do you want to email? For this example, we're just going to use one specific email account, so info at. You can use your own example of your own uh, email account that you have to type in here. So this is support.com. Uh, then maybe just to show as an example, you can add in a CC address as well. I will use the same. Just want to copy that. Control C, Control V. And then also you can BCC that as well. Paste, control V. And then our subject line, dot subject equal to. And this is where you also within your double quotations can type in. Uh, let us see if this will all show in the subject line. Close. Now, in this situation, we are doing one specific address, one specific subject line, but this will later be shown how to make it a dynamic formula to change as we go through a list, perhaps. And now that we've done that, let's run. And there we go. Email address from 2C, BCC, and our subject. Let us see if this will show in the subject line. Let us get to our body text, which is the section under. So when we create new, it will be this section where we need to type in all our information. And this is where we have to just know a little bit more of how to do spacing. So let's get to it. 
when we press enter again just make sure display is always at the bottom so we would then say dot body equal to now just for ease of uh, visually seeing it clearly let's space that out double quotation now this is usually as we would type in an email we would type in maybe hi james comma let's me know if you have seen this displayed in the body text area dot double quotation and let's press run again let's stop that uh, run and there we go hi james let me know if you've seen this in this play so everything is working as is but now what becomes more critical on the body areas when you need to do maybe the let me know needs to be at the bottom so it needs to maybe a full stop like that and this is where i will be showing you now a few extra things to add in that to do the spacing so let's go back within the body you would first type whatever it is you want at the top and then close it with double quotation then if you want to add something to it now if you've done a bit of excel as well you know that the ampersand is something that connects things so the same here we would say ampersand and then we would want to say that we want to connect that text to the next text but there needs to be spacing in between and that is where we have the coding called vb new line and then we would say ampersand again space double quotation and let's change that l to a capital l so now we say hi james vb new line means go to the new line and then type this so let's run and there we go hi james let me know if you've seen this but maybe you would like to there to be another spacing in between so what we do is let's close that no don't save it then we'll add another one after this so we'll say vb new line and vb new line and so we're saying hi james enter enter and the next string of text let's run that and there we go and that's exactly what you need to be comfortable with so to make this neater instead of typing vb new line vb new line the whole time let me show you a shortcut to this let's close that now typing vb new line vb new line it's easy to do but sometimes you might find oh, i'm typing this too many times so what's better to write is to create a variable at the top and we'll call it the next paragraph and we'll say this is a string so it's a string and then we would say that next paragraph equals and this is where we would type in our vb new line only once so we would say that it equals two Let's copy that let's paste it so next paragraph equals vb new line and vb new line so we're basically saying it's always entered twice and instead of typing it here we would say hi james remove that section and say next paragraph which is much easier to know and understand hi james go to next paragraph let me know and let's run that and there we go same result cleaner work what i also need to show you is that sometimes when we type a lot of wording here it could end up going all the way to the right and never to the bottom so how to help that to just visually and uh, follow this clearly and understand it you would usually go to the end of where your and is so let's choose this one and say okay so after the and you'll do space underscore then press enter to take it to the bottom so what this means is that the under the after the and and the underscore it means that that line is still linked to the following line below it and let's 
press run and then you still get the same result and to visually make it neater you would go there and space it all the way to just fall underneath so even when you go to the end of the sentence and you say okay I've got that text now I can say again and space underscore press enter again open double quotations looks like this works and close double quotations so what we expect now is to see hi James space between then it's a new paragraph and then this one should still be part of the previous paragraph but underneath it or will it be underneath or next no it will be next to it to make sure that there's a spacing between it we would say take away the underscore we'd say next paragraph and space underscore so let's run that and there we go. Hi, James. Let me know if this is in display. Looks like this works. Great. Let's get to the next one. So now you've created your email and with all the detail inside, but you'd like to also attach an, uh, a file or a photo other than the actual Excel file that you're working in, within. So first of all, you need to find out where it is located within your device your desktop or your laptop so our first statement will be under body we'll say dot attachments dot add and that's now where we would actually put in our address of where the file is located now to find the address of a file you need to first go and find it within your let's go for example I've got one in documents here and to find the actual address of where it is located you'll go and right click on any of them what you want to add to your email so let's use this example right click on that properties then you would go to security and you'll see object name at the top and there is the full address of where with the file at the end that you need to highlight and copy you can cancel that go back to your code place it within double quotations paste double quotations close parentheses enter so when I press run now I should see that that file has also been attached to the email so let's click run and there we go it has been attached at the top and this is what you can do with many attachments that you want so let's close that and so we can add many more attachments so we can just go at the bottom again and say again attachments dot add open parentheses double quotation paste the next one in double quotation close parentheses and when i press run there we go two have been attached and this is the easy method of that so let's get to the next phase so we've learned to create our first email draft with the standard format as shown we can add in our two if we want to ccbc we don't we can actually remove that entirely if we don't ever want that in there with our subject line our body our attachments and then to say that what do you want to do with that display it in the email box so that we can look at it before we send it if you want to send it you can change this and click and type in send but that means that you won't even have the opportunity to see it it will just create and send create and send as needed the other one would be to say that you want to have your templates created up front so you can just say save and it will save that in your draft box within your email address and the other part we need to add to this is now that with some situations uh, like in my case I have many email addresses that's linked within my out uh, within my outlook uh, application therefore if I run this it usually pulls through the default email address that's been uh, allocated in the program but I don't want that to be the case I want it to use infos Excel spreadsheet so this is where you would also have maybe a scenario where you want to always force it to use a specific from email address and this is what you need to type before the word either save or display let's rather leave a display for now and let's go above and we type in set dot 
send using account equal to in our Outlook application, the current session that's open in the accounts, my item in the accounts needs to be open parentheses, the specific email address. So you would say in my case, it's info at Excel spreadsheet support.com, close quotations, close parentheses, enter. Now when it runs through, it will always ensure that it's coming from that address. Now do take note that the address you place in here needs to be an active email account that's linked within your Outlook. So let's run that. And there we go. At the top, info at Excel spreadsheet support. So let's close that again. Now I don't want to save it. If I go to my Outlook, and if I look currently in my drafts, I have nothing. It is empty. So when I go to my VBA and I change display to save, and I click run, what it does now, you won't see anything pop up because it's not saying display. But if I go to drafts, and there we have our email address, uh, email box created with all the information in there. So this is one method you can do. Um, obviously, you don't want to do this if you have 100 or 1,000 people. But sometimes you do. You maybe want to make sure before you send it off. But at least you know everything has been pre-typed, text, and, and attachments have been made. Um, let's do the other one, the send. So let me just delete this. If I go to VBA again, and I take away save, and I say send, and I click run. Right now, it will not display it. Yes, and send it. It will not display it. It will also not uh, put it in the drafts. It will just go straight through to the outbox and come into my inbox. So right now, I don't see it anywhere here. It is still busy with the email, so it's not even in outbox. It is not trash. It is not in draw. So if I click on inbox now, let's just wait and see. It's synchronizing. And there we go. Email has come through. Well done. Now you're able to send an email from Excel via Outlook. Keep an ear out as I'll be adding more lines in the next tutorial to explain how to turn this into a bulk sending email similar to mail merging. So there'll be dynamic variables placed in there to change names, email addresses, and even place different attachments.